joining us from. Jenny stepped away. It's okay. Hi from Georgia, Nicola. I know you've got computer problems, so your sound doesn't work, but I'm dying to hear from you. Not dying, but you know what I mean. Got to be careful with our words. Hello, Miss Sherry. Welcome, everybody. Vermont, you're in, sh yes, Sherry in Vermont. Francesca in Chicago. Christine in Encinitas. All right. So that's wonderful. I'm so glad you could, I, you guys could all make it. And I'm sure that there will be more people popping along, popping in. So I'm going to dive in. Um, as you know, everybody here may probably already know me, but anybody that's just tuning in or listening to the replay, my name's Amira Hall. And this is the Intuitive Masterclass Part 3 of my series, The Mastering the Art of Tapping into Your Inner Knowing When We're Having Difficult Times. Basically, I help people shift their intuition from a survival mode to a thriving mode, thriving and having fun. So why, why should we settle for just surviving? You know, I can remember times in my life where I was just happy to get through one more day. Um, but thriving with our intuition is just like going from black and white to a super high definition, you know, uh, video and, 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 and accessing our psychic powers. So for me, there's no going back once you know what you know. So welcome to this part three. We're going to learn a state-of-the-art technique that I promise to share um, to shift you from the, the state of being in fight or flight and going into that place of calm and centered with a very quick and easy step. So you might want to have some note paper handy so that you can take notes on what you're experiencing, what you're noticing in your space. So in the first part of our training, we talked about grounding is your reality. And that's that's recording. I saw a lot of you um, checked uh, the replays and thank you for that. Thank you for everybody for all your comments and for sharing um, what you've been experiencing because that's really helpful to other people. I think it's really great to see all the differing um, sharings about the, you know, your car like we explored yesterday. You know, in the first training, I talked about everybody's intuitive. You're intuitive. And even though you can't believe some of the things that are beyond your senses. And so that's what we're diving into. We've all been trained and conditioned to rely on our senses. And sometimes they aren't really honest with us. Some of you rely on your hearing ability. Maybe some of you see auras or energy or light around trees or other people. Maybe you see your uh, color with your eyes open. Maybe you see color when you're going to sleep and you're just seeing the color in space, like in, in with your eyes closed. Sometimes it's images. So everybody has a little bit different on how we perceive things. And as we clear some energetic tension and anxiety, many more of our natural senses will come online. When I say come online, it's like they come alive. The thing is, none of us have been taught how to access beyond our five senses. Um, some of us, like I know you, Stu, you're a Pisces and I'm a Cancerian. Some of us have just always been very sensitive. And some of the people around us kind of talked us out of it. Or no, there's nobody around here. Or you're imagining things. And I remember my mom used to say, my, you have a very good imagination. <laughs> Little did she know, right? We've never been taught how to access our special abilities, or we haven't been coached how to, you know, um, amplify them. So that's what we're here to do. Those natural, spiritual, intuitive abilities are here to help us navigate life. They're here to help us have and enjoy a, a wonderful life. But we are um, conditioned by our environment, by the big people around us when we're growing up, to not see things that we might be perceiving. And we start to narrow and narrow and close down our range of perception. And so that's what happens. Thanks to everybody for liking the videos on YouTube when you go and comment. 
That helps it so much. It helps YouTube know that people like this information and they'll share it to more with more people. So I really appreciate it. It's just sort of sending these nice little ripples of vibes out into the universe. So the very first class we talked about grounding is our reality. And that grounds the physical body, helps the physical body feel safe. Because our physical body likes routine. It likes comfort. And as we talked about, the spirit body, the spiritual side to you, it loves adventure. It wants to go and play and explore. And, you know, you think it's Tahiti and your spirit is there. That's how clever it is. So, you know, when we need, when we want to do something different in the world, it's almost like we have to bring up our energy field within the body so that we can have that sense of adventure. So that's what the spirit does. When the spirit can come closer to our body and communicate to it in a, on, a, on a regular basis, a consistent basis, that's when the body goes, oh, oh, you're trying to wake me up. Oh, oh I'm a, a little more alert. Oh, yeah, I, I feel more alive. Yeah, I, I could do that. I got more energy. And that's what happens. So the spirit's communicating to the body. The spirit wants to have this adventure, but we can't experience in the 3D reality unless the spirit is close to our body, plugged in. And the spirit can't come close unless we've cleared and released some of these energy blocks. A lot of times, you know, it's just too hard for us. And when we get bogged down with anxiety and overwhelm, some of us just want to isolate. I, I'm really, I was good for that. Or cocoon, um, withdraw from the world, not get involved, um, just sort of making it day by day. And um, that's where depression takes over, right? And the, and our world just keeps getting smaller and smaller. It's just too much effort to make friends. It's too much effort to spruce ourselves up or to step out. So in day two, we talked about, or part two, we talked about who's driving your car and learning about your car. And I just loved reading all of your posts of, of what your car looked like. That was super fantastic. Futuristic cars, you know, the old cars, the standard, good, dependable cars, uncommon cars. That was really cool. So thanks for that. Um, a large majority of you, which is kind of unusual, you guys just stepped into the driver's seat and when you upgraded or cleaned out your car, it didn't change much. So I found that fascinating. So make make a comment in the chat if put me in there if you didn't notice any change or little change in your car when you um, when you cleaned it off. What did you notice? Any change? Put me if there was little change. If there was a lot of change not <laughs> where did it come did i get it oh yeah oh stink. who's who's not muted betsy i'm going to ask you to mute i'm going to mute you there oh, we go. i thought i had okay sorry no i don't somehow you there we go all right so anybody let's see my car was shifting in small ways as i sat in little details were adjusting yeah that's awesome and here's what's going to happen over time as you continue practicing this you're going to notice some changes it's going to upgrade now some of you were working with me in my mentoring we just refer to the center of our head for me it's like i step into the cockpit of a spaceship Okay. And when I open my screen, it's like the universe opens up to me. And it's like I can see into the quantum fields. That's how mine looks. Some people like, like a tree house, or you could be in the theater, theater of your mind, where you have a great big screen and you're sitting in a nice, comfy, uh, you know, lazy, lazy uh, chair. Electronics worked, easy to live in. Yeah. So as you keep clearing it off and as you grow, in your psychic awareness, in your intuitive abilities and trust them, your cars will change. So again, I interchange it with the center of your head. That's what you're basically doing. You're shifting into what I call a lighthouse perspective. You've got 360, D, 360 degree view. 
It's usually in a conservatory full of greenery. Okay, I love that, Sherry. Yeah, so yours, you can go into the car. Sometimes we have a little problem getting into the car or or getting that clear center of our head space. So that's when you might use the car metaphor. So whatever comes to you, it's a great opportunity for our spirit to just have fun because that's what our spirit likes to do. Now, I quickly mentioned yesterday in our in part two that I'm opening up a new training, and that is a six week, ma- uh, it's not a master class, it's a live training where we're going to merge manifesting and intuition training. So I'm going to be pulling out all my tools, and it's going to be a merge of learning how to use your clairvoyance to heal yourself and to heal and read other people. So it's going to be highly interactive. We're going to be going into partners and sharing and, and, and it's a lot of fun. I guarantee you. It's a brand new program. So many of you have expressed wanting to do some work with me. And I know that my, my 10 week training is a $6,000 investment. And so that's been um, out of reach for some of you. And I get that. So I've tried to create something for you and it's $495 for six weeks and we'll have two hours of training each week. And, and you'll also partner up with somebody each week and, and do some practice. So it's, like I said, it's highly interactive and it's brand new. I've never taught it in this format before. We're going to accelerate your psychic abilities, your tools to read in a very specific way that's controlled and dependable. Okay. So you'll be able to uh, rely on it for yourself, whether you have to make fast decisions for yourself in your life or help other people make fast decisions. It's playful. And um, yeah, so I don't want you to, you know, remunerate over this. Um, Just as, as your energy becomes clearer, you can think faster. You can make a decision. I don't want you to, you know, worry about this. If you feel like it's right for you, but you need some more information, I'd be happy to talk to you. So I'm going to give you, do I have the link here? Um, If you want to talk to me more about this and you just don't know if it's for you, I'm going to put your, my link here. And you can book an appointment and we can talk about it. Okay. So there is a VIP section to this training. And with that VIP, you'll have access to um, one-on-one sessions with me. There's four sessions. So it is an upgrade and everybody may not be ready for that. However, I highly encourage you consider it because as you, has anybody noticed in doing work with me each week, what a difference it makes in terms of getting clear? Um, Let's see who's up here. Uh, Christine, yeah, did you want to unmute and talk about that? What you've noticed by getting a weekly clearing? So the weekly clearing goes hand in hand with the work that you do all week long. So it's not like I work with you once a week and then um, and then I work with you again once a week. It it helps the momentum of all the work I do myself between sessions that I have with you. And I, I love when we do meet because it ties the the thread on both ends and it, it flows more easily. And also it's a good chance to um, ask questions and kind of fill in the gaps, you know, or something worked or didn't work or, you know, to, to ask questions, but definitely the sessions were essential for all the work that, you know, or the homework that I do during the week, it goes hand in hand. Well, yeah. Yeah. And thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Cause the way I've, and I've been a real stickler, this has been hard for me to actually launch a group training like this, because I truly believe in all my mentoring, when we really want to bust through some limiting consciousness or hidden beliefs, we've got to have somebody that has what I call a um, strong crown chakra. 
that I can see things that you can't and that are blocking you. And so by doing that, it's a quick release for you. And that's where it's lasting for you. And it becomes real. It becomes an inter integration with you. It's a, yeah. So I, I personally have been resistant to do this, but so many of you wanted to do some training. So this is what I figured out. I can give you the training. And if you're really, truly committed to your personal development and you want to go deeper or you want to have the fullest experience, I highly recommend the, the, um, you know, the clearing. So that's another thing. Well, I, as yes. Did you want to say something, Christine? Yeah. One last thing. I could She just went away. Have done any of this without this. Oh, there I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. I couldn't have done this without our weekly sessions. It, it was essential. You're in a bit, Christine's in the, in the 10 week mastery training. So it is a little bit of a different program, but I just wanted to mention that, that it's, it's it makes all the difference of all the people I've ever talked to that have done online trainings, but don't have a one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. It, it's, 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 it goes from 25% integration to 95 and so it's a massive difference. And I've been doing this for so long, 25 years now. I'm just adamant. I'm kind of dyed in the wool old fashioned, but I feel like your soul is in my hands when we do this. So I, I owe it to you. So maybe that's something I need to get over. So I don't want to belabor this, but I really want to talk to you. If that's something that you, you really want to talk about, I'm, I'm happy to um, address that. Okay. So um, the grand prize winner is Ultraman. Are you here with us today from, from class two Ultraman? Are you with me? Are you here? Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Ultraman. Well, you're going to have to, I don't know your email. I don't, are you with us? Yep. Oh, where yep. are you? Tokyo. Oh, you're Mr. Andy. Andy. Yep, yep, yep. Oh my gosh. Yay. Thank you, Andy. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So you're the winner. And so um yeah, so I'll I'll I got your email. I'll send that uh, link where you can book the appointment with me. Thank Congratulations. You Let's give Andy a hand. Andy has been participating in my salons and my every classes. And he wants it so bad, but I'm wondering when he's ready to step up. <laughs> and yeah, thank you for letting me pick on you. Thank you. Thank you for picking on me. Yeah, from Japan. Wonderful. I didn't see you post where you're calling from. Yeah. I'm trying to watch the chat, you guys. This is this is quite something, you know? So as I said, um, that training will start on May 16th. So we've got a little bit of time. And I'm planning to do a Q&A next Monday, May 8th. So I'm going to give you guys some time to practice with your tools, what you've got now, and, and, and work on them this week and dive in and come back um, for a bonus call and we can talk and have questions. And if you've got a burning question, I can maybe look at it psychically for you, okay? So remember that we're in that in this six week training, I'm going to teach you more advanced techniques. So we learned three. They're pretty powerful techniques. You just got a taster of it. Okay. Now, when I talk about this three step method from moving, shifting from chaos to calm, from anxiety to confidence, um, we shift into being centered and being grounded. So this three quick steps starts with you um, grounding in reality and stepping into your driver's seat. And then I'm going to teach you the real game changer, which is being able to shift your chakras out of flight or flight into um, centered and confidence, calm. So before we do that, let's just talk for a minute about the different types of anxiety. Have you noticed that there's some people in your life that just seem to float or skate right through life and, and things don't really ruffle their feathers? Does anybody know somebody like that in their life? Go ahead and, and say me, put me in the chat. If you know somebody that's just got that grace and ease and everything just flows and, and they're just, yeah, 
maybe four kids, Giselle said. <laughs> oh gosh, I hate what you know that you had it and you lost it, huh? Well, we can get you back on track, Giselle. All right. So those are people that have learned to trust their intuition and they have faith and that their intuition is going to guide them. And so when they come up to a snap or when they come up to something that might be a bump, they instantly tap into their inner resources. So they always know what the next best step is for them. So they're not calling 15 people to find out, you know, what, what they think. So that's why being able to tap into your intuition and having techniques that can help shift you when we when we get into those tough spots can be extra helpful. When we tap into that intuition, it boosts our confidence. It gives us an edge. And, and that is noticeable. If you've ever noticed somebody when you walk into a room and they can just command the energy in the room, type me in the chat. If you've seen or witnessed somebody before where you could just go, wow, I wish I could be like them because they are just as smooth as butter, a hot knife in a butter. <laughs> yeah. And they're clear and they're confident. Yeah. A person that I always think that is so grounded in reality is Oprah. Every time I've seen her, mind you, she's got lots of training, doesn't she? Oh, thanks, Bridget. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Well, now here, here's, I'm going to address what I call the elephant in the room. And, you know, some of you might not like this term. I've, I've dropped it a few times. Um, and that's the word psychic. Okay. There's a, it's a charged word in all the years of me doing this work. Quite honestly, I've been a closet psychic for years. Um, I didn't like the word my own mother used to say, oh, don't, don't, don't use that word. Isn't there another word that you can use? You'd think that I just said fuck or something, you know, to her. Well, she didn't like that either. Nonetheless, even when I was married um, back in the late, in the 80s, my ex-husband couldn't tolerate me talking about astrology. So back then, those words and terms were misunderstood. It wasn't readily accessible. And so you know, I personally had to, you know, I hid and then a little bit of punching, a little bit of doing the work on the side incognito or to small groups and communities. Then the internet came on and more and more people sharing things you, you can see over even just the last decade. But even for me, it's almost like I had this pattern of not of treading lightly because who was going to be pissed off. And interestingly enough, I think Francesca and uh, let's see, Stu, Marcy, you're here, Bridget here, you're from my mastermind group. And I'm just so grateful you all are here. But there's somebody from our mastermind group that told me when I offered to assist her, she said, oh, well, it says that you're psychic and basically you do the work of the devil. I, I'm, I'm a conservative Christian and I can't, you know, I can't be around that kind of thing. And I was a bit floored, but that's why I'm having this conversation with you. Psychic is an interesting word, you know, it, the root of it is a Greek word that means the breath of the soul. And when you're psychic, that means you're a seer of the breath of the soul. And I just, I truly love that. Of course, I didn't really want to get into dialogue with that person that said that. So, so, but there's people in our life, just not like our, our partner there in the, in the mastermind, but um, you know, there's been so many variances of what it is. The truth of it is you're psychic. When I say intuitive, I'm trying to soften the word because as I said, it's so charged and I try not to bring that vibration up, right? So it's when we say we're psychic, it's almost like the soul, our soul is trying to communicate to us, to the physical body. It's our spiritual knowledge and information coming to the surface. So there's a, there's many differences with intuition. So intuition and psychic are kind of broad words to describe that very aspect of, you know, aspects of who we are. And so one is the hearing sense, the clear audience, the clear seeing is the clairvoyance, the clear uh, cognizance, just clear knowing, and clear sentience, which is that sensitivity to feeling. And as I alluded to on Monday 
in our first class is that, you know, the highest level of development is clairvoyance. And the reason is, is because we can refine it almost like a laser beam. We can dial into it and zoom in and get information on a very, very high level accurate way. This is light years beyond, let's say, card reading, or I, I won't say astrology because I'm not adept in that, but um, yeah, it's it's a great, great tool to give you a new perspective um, and an understanding that we've got these abilities if we keep shutting them down by limiting or, or just by our perception of what the word is, we're maybe limiting ourselves to possibilities and potentials that we, you know, are there and available to us. So your spirit doesn't want you to be afraid of it. It doesn't want you to be afraid of the information that it has for you. So being afraid, okay, there's different types of anxiety, okay? So there's, Stu, you could probably talk about this with us, or Stu is our our, our psychologist in-house. Um, anxiety disorders, um, you know, there's persistent feelings of anxiety or dread, and those things can really interfere with our normal daily life. And that, for some people, can last days or weeks or months, and that form of anxiety can lead into deeper issues, right? Then there's the thing called panic disorders. Has anybody here had a panic attack? Write me in the in the chat there if you've had, um, yes, Bridget, it is like communicating with the God within. Yes, so Nicole, Nicole, you've had a panic attack, Francesca, Lori, Tracy, yeah, it's not uncommon. And I'm going to tell you, I had never had a panic attack until I was going to work, um, help a friend who was doing a, a, a weekend training in San Francisco. And I was crossing this bridge. It must have been, I don't know, five miles long. I don't know what it was forever. The longest bridge I've ever driven over. And all of a sudden, I started having these sweats and I couldn't breathe. Of course, I couldn't get out. The traffic was moving and there was nowhere to stop. And, and it was a horrible, horrible feeling of feeling like I was going to die. And what I found out after I crossed the bridge was that that was the bridge that collapsed during the Northridge earthquake in Northern California. I was literally driving through the panic and the energy that was at some, you know, um, dimension of all the, of a lot of people that died and the panic that ensued from that. So you're not sure if you had panic attacks or an anxiety. Well, okay. Um, I'm not the psychologist. I'm sure there's a slight difference, but they're both debilitating at the bottom line, right? They're not fun. And then they limit us into maybe exploring or let's say being confident or trying things that we would normally do. And I've had a client that all of a sudden, I mean, she drove for years and then all of a sudden she found herself, she couldn't drive. She just would have these panic attacks. So, um, so that limited her in, in what she could do and how she could enjoy her life, right? So there's another thing called a societal anxiety. And, you know, you could feel like you're perfectly fine at home, but not in a social environment where you your heart starts pounding. You feel like you're going to throw up maybe. Um, you get sweats. Your voice starts to fade or you talk really low. Um, have trouble making eye contact. And you may just think, well, I'm just not confident. Well, it could be a version of this societal anxiety that you're picking up. I remember um, one of my clients telling me that she was afraid of dogs, right? So she didn't want to go out anywhere, anywhere where there were dogs, they would absolutely put her in a a fit of terror. And when she was young, she was bit by a dog. I think it was a German shepherd. So every time she saw a, jaw, a dog, what was happening is that memory of that experience was fired up. And it was acting as if it was in present time. And she'd go into these terror fits. Not sure. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, agoraphobia, fear of um, the outdoors, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to get to that. So you're psychic. <laughs> the fear of going out of the house since COVID, you know what? A lot of people started uh, demonstrating symptoms of agoraphobia. 
And it was almost like if you go out, if you went out to the grocery store, you'd, I remember feeling all the fear in the grocery store. I remember Trader Joe's, they had arrows, you had to go down one aisle this way, and then the other aisle this way, and people would get all freaked out. And so you, when you're sensitive, you just start picking up other people's vibrations. And then unbeknownst to you, you're taking it on as empaths. Um, you just take it on and then it, you think it's your agoraphobia. It might not even be yours, which is cool if it's not, right? So these are very, very real issues. I understand that. And um, so what I want to teach you is a, a chakra shifting technique to snap out of that, snap out of it, stop it. <laughs> and once you learn this technique, you can shift when you have this you know, experience and it may, may come out of the blue. You may have a consistent issue with it. Um, or, um, it's just something that comes on new for, for whatever. Um, I had another client I'm thinking of, she had a wedding to go to, and it was somebody that was really near and dear to her. She didn't want to miss the wedding, but she was agoraphobic. She could not go out so I taught her this technique and we did some work together and lo and behold, not only did she go to the event, she was excited to go to the event and she stayed late dancing and she was just truly blown away and tremendously grateful for being able to have that experience that she would not have normally done. She would have, you know, stayed at home and I don't know, watch TV. So she left the house, she had a great time, she had a blast, and it made a big, big impact, not only on her, but others that uh, that um, she got to hang out with, yeah. So again, um, in the, in, in the uh, training that I've been talking about, the Amplify, we're going to be learning those kinds of tools and so much more, okay? We're going to be practicing them. So it'll be a phase or a version of self-healing and playing with our psychic abilities. So we're going, in that training, my, my goal is to bump up your confidence, bump up your abilities to draw to you more things that you want. See, I don't believe manifesting should be hard. Yes, we put intentions out. And yes, we must take action. But truthfully, if we're in alignment, we literally with ease draw them to us. So that's what I'm up for and, and playing a bigger game that way. So are you ready to dive into tonight's practice, right? Me in the in the training. A uh, chat, chat, training, training, chat, chat, <laughs> chugga, chugga. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the chakras. I'm not going to go deep too far into the story of the chakras. That's what we do in the life mastery. We go very, very deep in the chakras and each week is dedicated to one chakra. Great, Zora. Thanks, Betsy. I'm so great that you guys are grateful you're here. So the chakra is an energy force and it's the way I see chakras is not per se what they talk about in all the books or on the internet. I see chakras as a wheel of light. Usually there's actually two wheels of light and they're spinning within each other. And you can imagine like a pinwheel. If anybody can remember a pinwheel, you know, you blow on them and the wheel spins around They're little kid things. But when I see chakras, I see wheels within wheels of spinning kaleidoscope of color and you know kaleidoscope has patterns and so it's complex but we use our abilities to refine it and find one particular color let's say or pattern that flashes at us and that's how I get my information so that's too much information for you right now uh let's see so so the lower three chakras so there's seven major chakras and in my life mastery we explore eight chakras the the one the soul star chakra is the eighth chakra that sits above the head that's where your soul and higher self sits and gives you the information that we're trying to access here in the physical body so being that the chakras are, are, are centers of wheels and spinning light, they're basically the foundation for our spiritual anatomy. Now, the first chakra is located at the base of our spine, and it sort of sits between the hips. It's, it's the first of our physical chakra, 
Okay. And so basically what's happening is, you know, your body's getting information that, Hey, there's some, there's a problem down here as, as the spirit communicates to your body. That's when you have pain. Oh, and then you go, Oh, I got a sore lower back. Oh gosh, my leg hurts. And that's your spirit communicating that message to you. When I was diagnosed with the chronic fatigue syndrome in 1991 and the doctor, a good doctor told me to go home and prepare my affairs to die or to end up for the rest of my life in a wheelchair, I would say that my lower chakras were blown. They were completely exhausted. And I couldn't, I didn't have the tools nor the understanding that my spirit was trying to tell me, hey, we got a problem down there. You know, you got to take action. And it was after the doctors basically threw me to the curb and said there was no cure. Um, I trusted my spirit and it started, it was guiding me to find some solutions, which I did and spent about seven years on a healing journey. And that's when I started discovering and studying the ancient mystery schools. They know so much that we don't even know yet. So the first chakra is your, it contains your spiritual library of information, everything about survival. And so if you're someone like me that grew up in a survival environment, my dad was an alcoholic and every time he came home, it was like walking on eggshells. We didn't know if he was going to laugh and play with us or if he was going to be, you know, in a shitty mood. And so <clears throat> that's what happens is we start developing our survival information and that chakra starts functioning on, at a level of survival, always kind of on, on standby. What, what's it going to be? You know, do I, do I flee or do I hide or can I, is it safe to come out of hiding? So, or you may have had parents that, you know, every time they were paying bills, that was an unhappy moment. It would trigger things, right? And it would trigger these energies around money. Oh, there's not enough. What are we going to do? And all of that. And so you as a kid, you might be coming home and you go, oh, geez, you know, I, I don't want to go in there. So you hide or you go back to your friends because it's bill paying night, you know? And you also maybe take in that information about how to handle money, or maybe you avoid it. Maybe um, dad was tightwad and mom was, uh, you know, just always spending on, on, uh, on stuff. And so then there's a conflict. And so you, we start picking up all this information and filing it away. That's in our first chakra. That intuition is then telling you, don't go home, spare yourself. You're in survival. You don't, you want to be safe. Don't go there now. So it's really important to know, but more importantly, it's important to let it go. Yeah, not let it rule you. So the first chakra is all about survival. And the second chakra located two inches below your navel. And, and, it, and it's like a cone shape and it goes out in front and it goes also in the back. And that holds your spiritual library information about emotions. All you empaths out there, that's where you're operating from. And that's where you can maybe um, hit, hit walls and struggle with social um, challenges. Agoraphobia, you know, fear of going out. What's happened is your chakra is wide open and you're just like a vacuum cleaner sucking up everybody else's nasty vibes. And that throws you off kilter. And so you end up hiding or staying home because you can't handle it. But nobody's taught you how to manage that energy center so that you can have a normal life, whatever normal is. <laughs> I keep saying I'm normal and my friends tell me I'm not. All right. So solar plexus is chakra number three. It located right just below your uh, diaphragm. And it's above your navel and below your diaphragm. So <clears throat> that's your power center. That's the center where you can have boundaries, where you can recognize when somebody's crossed the line. Um, and, you know, and as I said, your power center, but it's also really critical for confidence. And also it's an energy center that when we're not pushing in the world and forcing things to happen, we allow things to come to us. This is where the manifestation comes in. Because when that chakra is not pushing and, and, and 
determined to be validated and proving yourself all the time and insisting it's got to be this way. And I'm going to work till my, till I fall and, and I'm going to push and I'm going to push and I push. Actually, the energy on the planet has shifted so much now that it's now, and it's going to get stronger where the old ways of doing things just aren't going to keep, aren't work for you, where you have to learn how to bring it to you. And it's an energetic shift. It happens with you. It's not with the mind. It is no longer with the internet, uh, internet, internet, <laughs> intellect. Maybe that's what I meant. Internet. God, AI is spooky. I was talking with Lori earlier and it is spooky. We're going to need to know. That's why this is so critical. I think is to be able to be discerning with the AI information that's coming through artificial intelligence, we're going to have to know, is that artificial intelligence driven? Um, like, is the training that Amira is doing, is that for real? And how can, how can I know her training is going to be any different than anybody else, right? You're going to have to use your abilities to trust. How many have you have purchased a program before and it really wasn't for you, or it wasn't exactly what you thought, or you didn't get what you wanted? Go ahead and put me in the chat. Because I've been there and I know what it's like. And so you got it. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, frustrating. And then you don't know who to trust. You can't trust yourself, right? Because you've made a bad decision or so you thought. It's all a lesson. So today what we're going to do is we're going to learn a quick release button. It's like an emergency break that you can release and, 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 and get uh, released. Okay, let's close our eyes. Ah, take a deep breath in. Just let go. Talking about anxiety kind of rattles us, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, it's almost like your spirit is kind of battled with this human cage. So we're just going to reassure the body. Reassure the body that it's safe and it's okay. And just telling your body that you're going to learn something new tonight. You, your body wants to know it's safe. And you're in the driver's seat. And so you're going to just say hello to your higher wise self. And ask your shock, your higher wise self to help you learn how to shift your chakras. Even if you don't know what a chakra is, even if you don't know where it is, our spirit's imaginative and it's playful. And remember, we want to come from a place where our spirit communicates directly to you. And maybe that's a feeling that you have. Maybe it's a sound. Maybe it's seeing or just knowing. And if you haven't seen the videos on the various styles of intuition, I encourage you to go to my YouTube channel and, and check those out. And so setting intention is about listening to your intuition and grounding it into reality. Let me say that again. Setting intention right now to listen to your intuition and ground yourself in reality. And as I said that, your spirits just went, whoa. It's almost like, you know, uh, landing in, in the zero point. So just for a minute, imagine that tool that we call grounding. And just in part one, we discussed, you know, what might be your favorite. Maybe it's a tree root or a steel beam or a waterfall or a laser beam, whatever comes to your mind is perfect. And whatever impression you have today, it might be different than yesterday. And with your intention from the base of your spine to the first chakra, all the way to the center of the earth, we start drawing that line or letting it extend. Some, some of you, it's just boom, done. Some of you need a little more time and it just passes through your chair and moves down through the foundation of the floor 
or the house and through the earth's crust to the magnetic core of the earth. And there, imagine you're connecting with the force field called gravity. And that magnetic core, you have another vision or intention to anchor or tether or tie, attach that grounding cord to the magnetic center. As you stabilize, it stabilizes the body physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And we're going to just take 30 seconds to just let go of the stressors of your day. Maybe you have a headache. Maybe there's some tension or tightness in your body. Maybe you've got a sore lower back. Just give your, yourself permission. Let your intention Release that pain. Drop it down your grounding. Let all the activities of your day wash away down the grounding. Let all the text messages and the emails sent or receive, let them fall away down the grounding. Let your social media activity, conversations, let the problems roll away without effort. And step two, we're going to ask ourselves, who's driving your car? So that car is symbolic of, it's just imagery to play with. And it's all about moving up into the center of your head. In some of my trainings, I teach that we will rise up in an elevator and we take it all the way up the spine, up to the center of our head, and you can step into the theater of your mind. Whatever comes to mind for you is perfect. And that sixth chakra in the center of your head, in your driver's seat, that's your sixth chakra, sixth chakra, number six. <laughs> And so we're moving right into that space. That's that like being at the top of the lighthouse. And if it's easier climbing in the seat of your car, that's perfect too. For me, it's command central of a spaceship. Just find yourself seating there and check it out. What's, what are you noticing? And now let's say hello to some beautiful, neutral, healing Mother Earth energy. And sitting in this in your car, just say hello to that Earth energy and direct it, intention, intend it to start flowing up the bottoms of your feet, coming into your ankles and the calves, through the knees, thighs, first chakra, and down the grounding. Just let it flow. Crank it up. Turn it up, baby. Pedal to the metal. Just turn the dial in your car and crank up that earth energy. <laughs> vroom, 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 vroom. Yeah. I didn't, I, I don't know if Dawn is here. She had a chitty chitty bang bang car. I thought that was hilarious. So I know some of this practice, this is new for some of you, and it's like, you know, walking and chewing bubble gum at the same time. And don't, don't worry, it, it, it takes practice. And, but it's fascinating once you get settled and start to realize that your spirit can stay in the center of your head, in the, in the, in the seat of your car. And um, yeah, without going down into that first chakra, we don't want to go down there because we lose perspective there. Yeah. So remaining in that space in your in the driver's seat or in the center of your head. And with our awareness on that first chakra, but staying in the center of your head, 
imagine and ask yourself, maybe there's a gauge or a dial on your car. And just look at that dial. As I say to you, where, what percentage from zero to 100, how much are you in survival? In the first chakra. And if you're in the theater of your mind, you can just envision a gauge out in front of you and let that needle show you from zero to 100, what percentage are you in survival? And if you don't, if write it down or put it in the chat, from zero to 100, let your spirit tell you, are you 100% in survival? Okay. 100% in survival. What that means is it's 100% open. Ten percent, Betsy. That's awesome. All right. There is no right or wrong, by the way. There's no pass or fail. Just learning what you can do, and just notice. Check that grounding. Are you really at a hundred percent of survival? Is that where all your energy is going right now to be survival? I think some of you are misinterpreting it. Are you feeling safe? If you're feeling safe, it's not 100% open. Anyway, just an if, FYI. The second chakra, that's your emotional body, your emotional center space library. It's carrying your creative energy and your sexual energy, the information about how you operate as a male or female. Now, you're in the driver's seat of your car. Look at the gauge from 0 to 100%. How much open is your second chakra? What is your second chakra? How much open is it? You can write that in the chat. I don't see. Mm -hmm. All right, Andy, 80. Betsy, 60, 60, Stu. That's interesting. 80. Great. All right. The third chakra is above the navel. It's in the solar plexus. And that's your gut instinct. That's your ability to set boundaries and have a healthy self-esteem. What do you feel about yourself from zero to 100? How open is your third chakra? Sherry, is 5% for your second chakra or third chakra? Well, it's not about good or bad, Bridget. It's not if it's too open, it's it's bad. Well, it's how you function, okay? And you're going to learn something here in, in a minute. So, um, Christine, you're 20%. Great. All right. So you got a sense of how open your chakras are. And now I'm going to share with you my chakra shifting secret. So the root chakra, that first chakra that we talked about, that survival chakra and your money chakra and everything about your tribe, all the information about survival, I'm going to ask you to close it down between 10 and 30% open. Just pretend there's a dial. You might see a camera lens or a, like, a, what do they call that? An aperture. Just turn it down to 10 to 30% open. And just notice what happens to your body. What's different? And go ahead and write in the chat what you notice. You slump. Did you relax? Did all the tension leave away? Leave your body, Sherry? No vote. You said a huge difference. What? How is the difference huge? relaxed you feel protected yes relaxed exactly yes bridget if your chakra was 100 percent open you'd be on full steam and high alert and defensive and protective the tension left good job yeah it slowed down not buzzing all over the place 
the, yes. Okay, great. I'm excited for you guys. You're awesome. That's great awareness. So your grounding, is that getting stronger? Are you noticing that it's working in harmony with that chakra and able to vacuum more energy and release? Yes. Good job, Christine. Yes. Yeah. The re Yeah. It started releasing the tension from your physical body. Yes. The organs then can do their job. They're not on this high cortisol pumping through your system. The rescue boat came for you. Awesome. You weren't drowning anymore. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So now we're going to, the grounding's getting stronger. We're going to close down the second chakra. That's two inches below your navel. And we're going to close that 10 to 30% open. Dial it back. Pretend you can see on your on your dial in the car or in the, on the reading screen in front of you. Let it be imaginative. And where do you see the second chakra? Or how are you, how are you noticing the body shift? What are you sensing? What are you feeling? You see pink, okay. Feeling something shifted or stifled? Betsy. Jump from an airplane, balanced, okay, Nicole. It's more in sync with the grounding cord, yes. You know, sometimes when we start, yeah, your emotions are calming down. Sometimes when we start letting go of all of this, we might really, like you might cry tonight. You might, it be, must be such a relief because sometimes we just hold on and hold on and hold on. And then all of a sudden it looks like a dam burst, right? Also being this is our sexual center. I mean, you might get laid if you want that. <laughs> might open up some parts of you that you forgot or closed down. Yeah, you can breathe easier. Yeah, good job, guys. You're doing amazing. Yeah, you feel like you're wrapped in bubble wrap, like falling over and bounce back automatically. Good job. <laughs> All right, so now we're moving up to the third chakra. That's in your solar plexus. Now, this one, um, so Lori says, I feel a bit uncomfortable. Well, yes, it is unfamiliar. And you're an empath and you go around taking up everybody's energy. You know, we're learning here to do it different and put ourselves first. Now we can still be compassionate and empathic, but not take on everybody and their brother's energy. So there's a difference. We've never been taught how to do this. So there is a nuance. If somebody told you how to suck in your gut and hold in your belly as you walk around for 20 minutes, you're going to go, oh, that, that feels uncomfortable. You know, I'm not used to that. I'm used to letting my big old gut belly hang out. <laughs> so yeah, it's a little bit, it's like putting on new shoes. You're, you're training it and walking different and feels different. So the third chakra, let's put uh, our third chakra, just turn it down to 50% not 30, 50. This is your power center. This is your center for self-esteem and confidence. And what do you notice happens when you turn that chakra down? Hey guys, I'm sorry we're going over a little bit. Are you okay with that? I guess you'll hang in there, right? So you might start just releasing old energy. Emotions are going to come up as you continue to release. You know, there's a lot of sensory experiences. Thank your body. Thank your spirit for doing such a good job without effort. Isn't that the best part? So I want you to just go ahead and leave those settings right where you're at. And you can go ahead and open your eyes. And I'm going to give you a few minutes. If you want, anybody want to share, I'll let you raise your hand. If you want to share an experience or ask a question. Real quick. Hi. 
Can't, literally raising your hand, huh? <laughs> I can't. I can't find the hand raising button on my thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can, can you do this with all the chakras? Yeah, Christine. See, you're so psychic that you're um, you're kind of jumping ahead, and that's what we're doing. So, first of all, in the psychic mastery or the intuitive mastery, I know Dawn is in that training. What we do is we to read. This is what I teach you. you. When you turn down the lower chakras, it takes our attention off of our physical body and our own patterns. So we're not reading or bleeding the information over into our reading person. But yes, you. I, I don't think the upper chakras are our spiritual chakras. I don't think you really want to turn those down because no, it's really, I want to keep I want to keep in my body. I need to work that's, on my that, body. That, this right is now. the whole idea. You see, we're trying to in a lot enliven and make the body work with the spirit, not work against it. We're and I've said it so many times, there's like this integration. The spirit can literally plug into the body and we we feel safe. The spirit feels safe to to communicate with the body. That's when our super spiritual abilities all come online. That's the well, magic. That's well, the miracles. That's miracle right. making time. Right. I believe right. Jesus the Christ was a master at all of this. He was masterful at in, you know working the energy. Yeah. When Does that the answer your question? Plexus, yes. When we did the solar plexus, I felt the connection all the way down to my first. Um, chakra and the way you just explained it I feel like that's the socket and the spiritual the other chakras are the plug and I need to concentrate on the physical body right now well we all do that's why we're here we're actually yeah. spiritual beings but we're having a human experience yeah. nobody's taught us how to do this yeah very helpful very helpful. yeah great great Bridget welcome hi I'm your hi so this morning I had a really tough day, um, <clears throat> like major depression and, and ending up crying and, you know, got some news that wasn't so good, then got some other news that's great. And it's just like this high and low. Yo, yo. <clears throat> but doing this work, this just this little bit of work makes me feel like I'm back in control again. And I've lost my sense of my psychic abilities. And I know it's there. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a muscle that you hone and I've just haven't been honing it. It's like, and it's not that I don't believe it. It's just that I, I, I don't, haven't mastered it to really have it be a muscle that works for the good for me, you know? Well, and there's, I see in your energy field is there's so much seriousness on it, you know, but the truth is it's actually very playful mm -hmm. and we get in our own way with our intellect and so this really helps when we can just start playing and allowing the energies to move aside. Really, those natural abilities, it's not like we have to train them. They already know what to do. We're just not <laughs> listening. And okay. they just can't come in. They can't come on full force and full, full, fully engage. So, you know, it's, it's so silly. It's so fun. And it's so simple. It's just laughable when you really when like knowing what I know now and how I see myself getting a tizzy from time to time I still do it okay doesn't mm. make me walking on water yet I'm working on that <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a long project <laughs> you mean we'll be able to walk on water in six weeks <laughs> no not in the six weeks maybe in about 12 Donna's working on it aren't you Donna <laughs> where are you Donna <laughs> Yeah, so that's, it's just a lot of fun, you know, but I wanted to give everybody people that wanted to do some work and weren't ready to dive into the bigger program, you know, but I know so many of you, even by the second week of my 10 week training where it's one on one, it's really monumental. So not that the six weeks won't, we're going to have a lot of fun more than anything. So come and play and, and explore and heal, you know, because it, it in all the work I do, it's about healing ourselves. It's taking ourselves to another level. It's it's stepping it up, knowing thyself, and then directing the energy to get what the hell you want, <laughs> not what you don't want. <laughs> so thank you so much for thank that. You. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Thank you. All right, sweetie. Thank you. Is there anybody else? We've just got a little bit more. Anybody else got a question or comment? 
Anybody? Anybody? Okay, that's great. I hope I didn't put anybody to sleep. All right, let's see what else. Okay, so in review, when we close, just check your chakras now. Have they opened up? Go ahead and close them. If any of them have jumped around or moved around, just close it down to 10 to 30%, your root chakra. That helps you ground in the present. And it's just that quick. You could be in your car and freaked out or panicked that you're late for a meeting. And you could literally, with your eyes closed, go boom, close it down. Feel centered in your body. Now, we don't want to clo close it down completely because you still might need to access some fast decisions. You know, you need your body to respond. So I don't want you to get too spiritual on me, if you know what I mean. So we don't want to function off the fight or flight, the high cortisol. That's the difference, okay? So close down, you've got this, right? If, if you're wide open, you're on high alert. You're ready to take action. Okay. And that's what anxiety causes your root chakra, that first chakra, just to fly wide, out, wide open to 100%. No wonder, Bridget, you were, you were saying earlier, you're at 100%. Yeah. And that cortisol surges through your body, through your system. And that just causes damage. Yeah. It, it, you lose deals that way. You, you lose friends and, you know, and money. <laughs> it's hard on the body. You lose hair, you, you, you know, get dry skin and, you know, you get nervous and it's no fun, you know? So, um, so keep that in mind when the, when the chakra is less than 30% open, you're drawing on the earth energy, the body feels safe. And in the training, in the six weeks, if it's, let's say, stuck at 70% or 90%, we're, we're going to learn some tools to clean it off so you can turn it back down. Because sometimes it gets stuck open, just like a, a, I've had camera lenses that were just, you know, they like the shutters are like half open or something, you know, the little eye flaps. Same with the second chakra. If, if it's wide open, you're in the spotlight. Basically, you're sucking up everybody else's energy. And that's not fun because you don't, you lose sense of what are your feelings and what are other people's feelings. And you take on problems of the world, and yet you can't sort your own, your own out. That's also what happens is you, you get overwhelmed. And then you're just, um, you know, you start living in fear because like COVID, you stop seeing the truth or you stop doing things that you love doing because you're what I call matching the frequency of everybody else around you. And it's literally taking over for you. So turning that chakra down, there's no spotlight on you. And it's the spotlight becomes your own spotlight. You are focused on what you're feeling and knowing for yourself. You can know if you're feeling sad and know it's your sadness, um, or you can just be happy. <laughs> Third chakra has to do with our boundaries, our self-esteem. It's feeling your power, feeling confident, feeling certain, no matter what bump or, or you know, misdirection you come up with, you're going to find a solution. And that's when we talked in the earlier part about how people navigate through life and they don't seem to ever have a feather ruffled. That would be you when you do that. If your chakra is um, wide open, no. The reason we only turned it down to 50, sorry, I got a little bit distracted. When we turn it down to 50 is we're in control of it. But when it's less than 50, you have no boundaries. You're the doormat in everybody else's life. And then you, um, when it's 50% or a little more, you're, when, if it's too much, then you've got too strict of boundaries, right? So the three steps are, Grounding in reality, number one. Number two, being in the driver's seat, having that clear sense of where you're at, being in present moment. And then the third a step is being able to shift your chakras, turn them down so you're 
able to make the right decisions for yourself and take the right action. So there you go. So again, I just wanted to um, share with you about Amplify. That's the training I'm talking about, the six weeks to awaken your psychic abilities. There's the link. You can check that out. Um, and as I said, for anybody that has some questions, um, how this might be appropriate for you, or if you just want to come and have fun, um, any questions, you know, I think I put a link here and I don't know where it is now. Um, or just email me and I can give you some more details. We can talk about that. So I want that class to be fun. I wanted this to be fun. So I'm going to just open it up again for anybody that has any questions so that I don't leave you dangling so that you can practice this week. Anybody have any questions for me? Guys are all so good. Questions? Questions? There's, there's no silly questions. Learning this, and if you have it, maybe you just want to put it in the chat if you can't open your phone. I know, Nicola, you wanted to share something today. Um, I it, Oh, gosh, my phone isn't here. Nicola, if you've got your text that you texted me, I'd love to read it out to everybody. Oh, they do? Thank you. <laughs> Who's got their hand raised? It doesn't look like it on mine. Bridget hey, and Marcy. Well, hey, there you go, Marcy. Go for it. Um, I'm not welcome. Sure. Thank you. I'm not sure how to close harsh, partially close down your chakras. I, I I don't know the mechanism to do that. Yeah, Marcy, you're a real analytical person, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, and and actually, that's very normal for a lot of us who are analytical. And so what I recommend is just pretending that you know. Your oh, spirit yeah. knows how to do it. And mm -hmm. so what we intend, it happens. Did you feel the difference when you shifted it or turned it down? No, not really, because I didn't really you, understand. You got stuck on how to, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, and again, it's one of those things when we practice. And honestly, I like to say, let's pretend we're in kindergarten. If you were a five-year-old and they said, okay, kids, we're going to turn this down. We go, okay. And you just do it. And so it's like that. And so we have to bypass what I call the analyzer, the okay. super duper part of ourselves that's well-trained. And every single one of us on this call is over-trained in analyzing stuff. And so this is using another part of our brain and a big part of it is playing. And, and you could almost, you say, it's like fake it till you make it, but then it'll blow your mind. You're going, holy shit, is this real? <laughs> right, Lori? <laughs> yeah. Does that answer your question, Marcy? Yes, thank you. Yeah. You're so welcome. Thank you. Okay. Bridget. Um, I went to your website and I, I went to... Um, the payment place to pay for the class and then the VIP it was a little confusing is the VIP an additional $400 yes it, it, yes, it is okay. because I'm going to be doing one-on-one -on -one clearings with you okay so that's yeah so other the rest of it will be a small group how many we get we get from this training and then um, then there will be one-on-one -on -one for people that up for that. I highly recommend it, but I did break it down to make it accessible for people who do feel it's too big of a stretch. Yeah, and I, no, I really want to help really people. Good value. Yeah. So I really want to help people and realize that honestly, it's, it's really underpriced, but it's my way to sort of um, help you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. And uh, there we go. Miss Lori coming to you. Yeah, so I was curious, um, because I'm in the 10 week course, I was curious what the difference is between the 10. Oh, week and well, in the in the in, in the course, in the life mastery, basically, you're just working with your chakras just <laughs> in this class, we're going to be interactive, you're going to be using your clairvoyance and reading each other, you're going to be looking at somebody else's chakras, and be able to heal it. Oh, cool. Okay, so you'll be able to apply this into everything else you do. You're going to be able to learn, let's say, if somebody's looking at their business and they need, they're stuck with their business, you'll be able to look at that energy and clear the energy off the business. 
if it's a relationship. So you, yes, you're learning how to heal yourself and you're doing the deep dive in all the chakras. So this is going to be partly healing and partly reading. So when you're reading someone else, you're actually healing yourself. Yes. So every single one of thousands and thousands and thousands of people that I've read over 25 years, I heal myself. Bridget, that's how you gain confidence. <laughs> you know, you just keep clearing your energy and, you know, it's just there. And and I have to be honest, I'm not always confident. I don't feel it anyway. So I, I, I have to admit that. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you, Christine. Was that, or Lori, was that, that answer your question? Yes. And another one came up, but okay. Oh, so I can actually help others. So like, cause yeah, um, I can help others. Well, actually, no, I will teach you how to read like I read. Okay. Cause I was going to say, I'm not allowed, not, not allowed, but no more courses until I finish my 10. Weeks. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing that. Well, we can talk about it. Okay. This is going to be light and playful. This is not going to be as in depth as what you're committed. You're, you're working on. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. So I think, yeah, I think you'd have a blast. That's what it's more about, right? But, you know, there's so much seriousness on healing and this whole notion of psychic. This this is sort of to take the woo-woo out of it, to apply science to everyday things that we should be using. We should be accessing our spiritual gifts on a, on a more de regular, dependable way. And I think it's a, it's a sh shame and, and it's time to shine. It's time for us to shine. It's time for us to up level. Yeah. And how can we do that if we're in mediocre field, uh, you know, zone? Yeah. Thank you. I know how to interpret dreams. Maybe I can help. Yeah. Well, it maybe you know how to interpret them, and maybe you'll you can learn some more. Nova to Nicola. Oh, oh Nicola was. Oh, did you share? I needed this tonight, Christine. Great. I'm I'm so grateful. I'm looking for um, Nicola's. Sherry, your heart seemed to be blocked. I missed a bunch of things here. I'm sorry, guys. Andy, you're so good with your technical stuff. Keep the first chakra, second chakra tempered. He, well, that's a good question. He says, is it best to keep the first, second chakras at 10% and the third at 50% all the time? Look, your chakras are part of the spiritual anatomy and they breathe. Life happens. You're not a robot. You're not AI controlled, are you, Andy? <laughs> so I think it's a dance. Then they're always fluctuating like Marcy's back screen there. She's got the neon northern lights going. I think that's what our spirit does. And the connection with our body, there's ebbs and flows of it. And so it's just trying to be flexible with the information. This is a tool if you're anxious, right? You would be able to turn down those energy centers, be able to check in with yourself. You know, how am I feeling in this moment? Oh, something just hit me. I didn't know where that came. I might not know. It could be, you know, I don't know, Jessica's energy. Where did that come from? It happens to me. You know, and now you've got a tool to monitor it and go, oh, I'm backing that off. You're welcome, Betsy. N Nicola, the dream was very vivid and she woke up and went back to sleep and she dreamt that I was there. The dream was still there and I kept going like it was. Nicola, you said something. I'm going to go get my um, Christine. Did anybody see that message from Nicola? crazy, Nicola. I wanted to share it. Anyway, she said, she read, sent me a text today that she was really feeling the energy. She heard there's something wrong with her sound on her computer, so she can't uh, speak. But she was saying that she really, really felt the energy from me and the group. Oh, she was dreaming. Um, and it seemed like she got a healing from us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you're going to learn in the Amplify to read the seven layers of the aura and, and to be able to see information that's going on with other people and how that ref reflects to you. So when you read somebody else's energy and look at their energy field, you have a matching picture. 
every single, and this is mind blowing, every single client I've read over the last 25 years, I have something matching. I have a similar story. I have a similar experience. That is truly mind blowing. And I get the opportunity to heal myself when I read you. That's my top secret. I don't tell everybody. Yeah. So, all right. I think that's it, guys. Um, there's just so much that I want to share. There's only so much time, right? And I know I don't want to be a fire hose and just blast you up and open, but it's certainly, it's my passion. I love helping. I love showing you ways that you can live a better and happier life. And uh, I know I've gone way over our time. I'm grateful that you're all still here. A few people have dropped off, but I'm grateful that you're here. I'm grateful that you showed up. I'm grateful that everybody participated. I'm going to do another drawing, okay? For everybody here, your homework is to write what you experienced on the YouTube channel, what you experienced when you turned down your chakras. Okay, that's your homework. And then everybody that's participated, everybody's name will go into another drawing, a bonus drawing. So the drawing on Thursday, so let's see. You need some time to write about it. Well, I'm debating. I'll announce Friday morning on my live. So if you could tune in, you'll find out who... Um, was the winner. All right. And then Monday, I'll, I'm going to do a Q and a, and I'll send you a notice for that. You guys can practice with your tools and come back. Maybe I'll have another little surprise for you. Maybe a little practice. We can do some reading and have some fun. Um, and there I will announce everybody that's entered or put any kind of um, comments on the YouTube, everybody's name will go into another drawing for a one hour reading with me. Okay. That's a uh, $500 value. So I just want to have fun and it, the more happy people, the better we are. Any last call for any questions? Hand up, hand down, Christine or Lori? No, I'm sorry. I had you pinned here with me. I, I just, I obviously... <laughs> got lost <laughs> in all the excitement okay let's see thank you're welcome andy thank you for i think it's got to be in the middle of the night isn't it andy in japan or are you tomorrow like australia 10 30 a.m okay this is a decent time for you then right <laughs> all right okay awesome well hey thanks again everybody you've made this just so incredible for participating playing all out um putting posting your comments i'm going to look in my youtube this replay i'll send it out to you in email i'll be looking for your post show me and tell me what you noticed, how it felt when you turned down your chakras. And then the next week you can practice keeping those chakras turned down and I'll join, join me for next Monday for a Q and a and some play time. Okay. All the best, everybody shine bright. Enjoy your new space. <laughs>